There was shock news last night, Michael Verney, when Dermot Connolly announced his retirement from the Dublin football panel. Now, in some respects, the last couple of years, maybe his involvement hasn't been quite as central as other years. Like, he came on last year in the final and everyone waxed lyrical about that pass that, well, maybe it was just a boot up the field, but it ended up being one of the greatest passes in the history of Gaelic football. Um, we know a couple of years ago when he came on against Mayo, he turned that All-Ireland final. Is, is it an absolute shock that he's left, left the scene, as far as you're concerned? Uh, probably not a big shock at this stage when you look at I think like his accumulated game time over the last three or four seasons is probably very very small. But it's just that I suppose it, it's another kind of it's another kind of big name departing the scene. And I think when people think of Daniel Connolly, like it's very hard to pick out like singular kind of instances. There's loads of there's so many things that I think about him. Like going back to the 2011 All Ireland final, you know, wearing his brother's his brother's Leitrim top uh when they were meeting the president before the match. There's all those great passes, all those great scores, but there's also all the kind of controversy and various kind of things that came with it. Uh there's obviously the twelve week ban he got for, for pushing the linesman that time. There's, you know, the will he won't he come back with Dublin. Uh there, you know, when he headed off stateside to play with Donegal Boston, when he tried to head off last year and, and wasn't wasn't able to go and then amazingly ended up on the Dublin panel two or three weeks later when, when Jim Gavin famously dropped it in mid conversation or mid sentence to when he was talking about players on the Dublin squad. Um I'm just kind of thinking, even just before we started, has there ever been a more discussed GA player in the history of the GA? I'm not sure. Now the thing is obviously Twitter and social media feeds into that. But the, the will he won't he come back for Dublin? Will he won't he head to the States? Is he heading to the States? Is he coming back? Will he be playing for Vincent's this year? Um and just maybe some other kind of off the field controversies, the DRA appeal in the you know that went into the early hours of the morning nearly before the All Ireland final. Like he has packed some amount into a career and I've mentioned very little about the brilliance on the pitch. There's been so much stuff off the pitch. It's been an unbelievable career. Like I remember being sent to Parnell Park a couple of years ago to do Dermo watch. Like that's what that was my job. He was back from the States. They were playing a county semi final and my role was like to watch Dermo. Like is he what sort of shape is he in? Do you think does he look like he's in the sort of shape where he could come back and play for Dublin next year? That was the lure that he had. Everybody just loves talking about him. Um for opposition play opposition counties he was probably a player that you love to hate. Because, you know, and you'd see little instances and things like that. But they appreciated his brilliance and would love to have him on their team. But because he wasn't on their team, maybe he was a, a focal point for them to vent that. But by Jesus, he, he packed some amount into his career. The more you talk about him there, the more I think of DJ Carey, another player who was an absolute genius who ended up having, like, he was heavily scrutinised. And a huge amount of his off-field activity was being covered in, in newspapers, like, taking up a huge amount of uh, column inches. Davy Fitz, I suppose, would have found a fair bit of that over the years as well. Another charismatic character, um, people sort of polarizing character to some degree. And Connolly was, I suppose he's kind of the same. Whatever it is around him, he he grabs the headlights. If it isn't true brilliant football, it's true, you know, he's getting wound up by a player and he ends up getting a red card. I mean, he obviously got the close attention that David Clifford is now sort of going through and it's going to lead to a red card now and again. And there was that incident with the, was it James Dolan from Westmead sort of did something to him and it sort of, Dermot then took him down in a headlock, if I remember correctly. You know, th there's that sort of thing. But I think he's a bit like one of those characters that because whatever he does seems to be in some way dramatic or in some way newsworthy, he probably he just ends up in the media so often and like it both for good and bad and i remember he was given the leinster club player of the year it could have been 2014 or 15 something like that and uh, he was at a media event and he wasn't talking at the media event <clears throat> and we were asking is he available to talk or whatever and uh, he, he wasn't actually speaking to the media at the event he was just doing the photographs but uh, i was talking to one of the pr people who set it up and he was kind of shocked when he realized that the people who voted for this was the media. That, that's why he won the award. And uh, he was like, I thought the media hated him. But no. no, the media, anything but. It's just, unfortunately, there's a huge demand for stories to do with someone as charismatic as him on the field. And obviously, who's had a few things going on off it. And also, just the fact that you're a Dublin player as well. You know that that's going to have huge countrywide appeal on the back of a newspaper. 
So that's more or less why. But just what a profile for a player that rarely spoke to the media. Unbelievable. I'd say I was in probably one of the few times he did speak to the media was, and he only he only spoke to the media because he was captain. It was before, uh, I would say it was maybe 15 or 16 final, Leinster final, before they played road in one of those finals. He was Vincent's captain. And he was actually asked in the interview, um, you know, you don't do that many interviews. And he just said, no, to be honest with you, I, I'm captain. I wanted, I wanted to talk. It's, it's different when you're captain. Uh, he just so talked about, like, um, it's funny, media, the media... The media loved him in one way, uh, but it probably came across to him that he was being kind of scrutinised the whole time and was getting far too much media attention. But people just love talking about him. Like, I was looking back at the 2017 final when he came out with the vest the vest on. And I'd say for, you know, if the build-up to that final, once the teams hit the pitch, was 20 minutes, Spillane and Brawley and O'Rourke spent about 10 minutes like laughing and skitting about his top and everything. And I was at the match and I was thinking... Like this is it's a bit ridiculous. If I was the ma- if I was the manager, I'd be kind of thinking like, what is this lad doing? He stands out like a sore thumb almost. Then he comes on, and it was probably his best All Ireland final performance. Like he pulled Dublin over the line that day. He got that. He got that. He won that win and free. He kicked a great score, and you were just thinking like, there's guys like that. Sometimes you just have to let them be themselves. They're they're individuals to some respect. They're obviously part of a team, but there's things that he does that uh, were just kind of very individualistic and you have to just go at that sometimes. Mm. But just a phenomenal player allied with, you know, obviously a, a, a mad kind of a personality with all the attention that he got and all the things that kind of happened. But uh, yeah, fa- a fascinating player. And as I, I think, I genuinely think, I don't know if a player was probably ever scrutinised or given as much media attention as he was. And you'll see it all across Facebook and Instagram and Twitter today. And over the next couple of days, people posting you know, their favourite Dermot Connolly score or their favourite pass or the favourite kind of bana- bizarre kind of story or situation that he ended up in. That was just the appeal that he had. Yeah, and if you ever watch one of those highlights videos of his scores from over the years, it's it's magic stuff to watch. There's so many brilliant scores. Even I'm thinking of that left foot one against Fermanagh and he just glided it over with his left foot I also think of his seven point performance against Tyrone in 2011 which I felt announced Dublin as a really really serious team to go on and win the All-Ireland that year which they obviously did Uh, another thing like when you're talking about being an individual and that incident before the 2017 All-Ireland final where he's wearing the sleeveless top and you just have to let some players be who they are um, because otherwise I don't know, are you stifling them or whatever? And even just there's a big conversation in American football this week about Cam Newton. So he's the quarterback who has taken over for Tom, from Tom Brady at the New England Patriots. And he's the six foot five, 250 pounds, I suppose, 17 stone or whatever, something like that, uh, player who plays a quarterback. And he's unbelievable. But like, well, he is when he's injury free. He was an MVP five years ago. And he's sort of made, puts on these wacky sort of suits the whole time before matches. He'd have... He looks like he's a um, paleontologist one week. He looks like he's, I don't know, a doctor. And he has all sorts of crazy outfits. Like, all you have to do is look up Cam Newton outfits and you'll see. But again, his whole thing is that, you know, that's just who I am and it makes no difference to how I play. And like I would say, if Connolly's used to doing something like that or, or mess, like he might show up to every training session with the sleeveless top on. You just don't know. And some lads do that at trainings. You probably know that too. Some lads enjoy the bit of crack, a bit of messing, the bit of attention, the bit of, the, you know, smirk out the side of their mouth because other people are reacting to them. So just let him be. If it doesn't doesn't affect him, why would you Why would you care? But you, you, were, you were making the point then that... I mean, how weakened are Dublin after... I mean, they're still going to be really strong and probably in the All-Ireland Final are not far away. How weakened are they from a number of players leaving this season? You know, the depth of the panel has to have taken a hit. Uh, I, I definitely would think that, you know, when you look at it on the face of things and you're thinking, uh, OK, Owen O'Gara retired. He mightn't have had a massive role in recent years on the pitch. Bernard Brogan the same. Or Darren Daly the same. Uh, and you're looking at you know, obviously Jack Jack McCaffrey has had a massive influence. He's he's been brilliant the last couple of years, but I think when you take and Conley obviously gone now too. When you take there's a lot of leaders gone from their dressing rooms. There's a lot of experienced players, uh, calm and influences guys that it's on scene work. They might not be you know delivering on the pitch anymore, but they're delivering outside of the white lines. Um, they're probably 
uh, making sure the competition and training is much tougher. They're probably pushing lads on. They're probably making lads more accountable. Um, and I think particularly when things maybe are going a bit ropey at times, uh, an experienced lad, just a couple of things that he says, uh, even whether it's quiet words to a fella by himself or whether it's you know to the whole team, uh, get Jim Gavin and sure would have used a lot of the older players. Like the experience is is vital, and it's you know you can't buy that. And there's an awful lot of experience gone from the dressing room. And it's not like there's an awful lot of experience gone from a dressing room that's, you know, the same as it was over the last couple of years. They have a new manager in as well. Things are different. There's obviously going to be new systems, uh, new things, the new kind of trends of thought maybe have been bedded in. And I just think it, it, it's a good bit more difficult. I know Mark O'Shea said yesterday if Dublin are ever going to be caught. It's it's going to be this year, and yet you'd, you'd have to agree. I think I think you'd be foolish to say, oh, Gara, uh, Conley, uh, Brogan, and maybe Darren Daly haven't done, they haven't been on the pitch that much. That that's fair enough. But I think I think you'd be you'd be a bit foolish to think that they're not losing huge a huge presence, four huge presences around the dressing room as a result of their departure. And then like with Jack McCaffrey gone as well, like that's he's the jewel in the, the jewel in the crown for them. Uh, definitely, like Desi Farron could never have envisaged a, a season like this, a really, really challenging season like this. Um, and I think the, the opposition, the opposition will should be stealing themselves and really getting themselves ready because this is a chance that they might not get. They haven't got in recent years, and it's a chance they might not get for another couple of years. Yeah, and because they probably won't know where they're truly at until they meet the Ulster champions in the All Ireland semi final. Because I, like most people, am just assuming that they're going to waltz through Leinster even if they had no tactics going out if they like if somehow everything had gone wrong and we didn't know you know behind the scenes and they were walking into a trap in all Ireland semi-final we probably wouldn't have really gotten a sign of it through Leinster because they just feel they're going to walk through you know holding me to four points last year Kildare not being particularly close in the past couple of seasons yeah I agree with you if they're going to be caught any year and I agree with Mark O'Shea it, it probably will be this season but of course, they still have some of the greatest players of all time, so there's a fair chance they'll do it too. We'll leave it there, Michael. Yeah, thanks, Chad.